Howdy hi tankers and welcome back. Right, it's time for another quick tank review and today we're going to be looking at my new favourite tier 9 heavy tank in the game and it's probably my favourite heavy tank in the whole game as well. It used to be the Conqueror but since getting this thing, getting it fully upgraded and playing quite a few games in it, this tank is an absolute beast. It is what defines a heavy tank. It has brutal armour, a brutal hard hitting gun and it is relentless and it can survive some extreme punishment unlike some of the other tier 9 heavy tanks including this one the IS-8 I've had this tank for over a year and I've still only got 100,000 experience in it I bloody hate this thing I've almost contemplated spending some gold just to get the IS-7 I hate this thing so much it's not even a heavy tank it's more of a medium however trying to play it as a medium it has bugger all gun depression and it doesn't work for me and I really dislike it anyway back to the ST1 or the STI whatever your flavor is is it a 1 or is it a Roman numeral or is it a which it would be 1 or is it an I who knows somebody let me know the definitive answer and I shall continue to call it whatever you tell me to call it anyway onto this thing it is horrendously good let's talk about a few bits and we'll see why I think it's so good right so we'll just bang this button and we'll have a good look at this I'm gonna use a armor viewer to go into the armor into depth so just have a quick look at the minute the numbers are looking pretty good 140 millimeters on the front plate 250 meters millimeters on the front of the turret 140 on the sides of the hull 160 sides of the turret blah -de blah it's looking pretty damn decent from that However, I'll go into it in more depth in a minute. It has 1900 hit points. That's there. That's enough for a tier 9 heavy. That's not far off some of the tier 10s. Speed limit at 40 kilometers per hour. Um, that's kind of oh, you, you rarely get to the 40 kilometers an hour. It's quite a lumbering beast, but it does pick up a bit of speed over time. But it's a big heavy tank, and it only has a 700 horsepower engine. So the um, the wet power to weight ratio isn't particularly good. Chassis rotation is okay at 26 degrees a second, but the turret's rotation is pretty poor at 18 degrees a second with this big old heavy turret on it. It's a fully upgraded turret in the picture. And rate of fire is okay at 4.51 rounds per minute. View range is 380 meters, that's enough considering it's Russian, that's not bad. And the as you see, the new bar is where they put in the camouflage factor. It's below average, but then it's a heavy tank. And this thing doesn't mind getting shot at. In fact, it quite likes it. Right, so let's have a quick look at the packages. Right, so the stock tank isn't that bad at all. Although it's going to be slow, it won't have as many hit points as the fully upgraded tank. The gun is the same gun you get on the IS, I think. So at this point, you're not going to be able to do much damage but the stock turret can take some abuse as well so not too bad but if you've been up the IS line at this point the BL9 is used on the IS3 so that should be cheap that first upgrade and then the second upgrade you get the nice stonking thick turret and a better radio and a better engine it starts to move then right so let's look at the top package and we're going to talk about this again if you've been up the IS-3 line the top gun on this is the same as the top gun on the IS-8 so this not bad of a grind if you've not been up the IS-8 line up to the IS-7 it's still not that bad a grind because the stock tank is still pretty damn well armoured and you are going to be able to hustle from the front but you will need to fire a few premium rounds and it just gets better as you go up the line. Right, so let's have a look at this a bit more in detail. So like I said, 700 horsepower engine, that's sort of okay. Rate of fire is okay. Penetration for standard rounds using the top gun is pretty damn impressive at 258 millimeters of penetration and 440 alpha damage. Premium rounds go up to 340 and that should be more than enough to deal with anything and still the same alpha damage and HE is obviously higher, so higher alpha damage. Aim time is very Russian at 3.4 seconds. 
Um, it's the worst thing about these tanks. But the accuracy isn't actually that bad for a Russian tank at 0.37. My favourite tier 9 heavy used to be the Conqueror. The gun handling on that thing is absurd. However, this more than makes up for it in the way its armour works compared to the Conqueror. There we go. Right, so we've talked about the rest. Well, the signal range is pretty good at 7.30 and the rest of it I've all spoke about before. So, uh, it's all looking pretty good. And now it's time to go and look at the armour in a bit more in depth. Right, tankers, here we go. We're going to be looking at the ST1 using a new website that I've kind of copied off of Quickie Baby, worldoftanks.gg. Everybody can use this, it's a free to use website and it's a very useful tool for looking around any tank you want to drive and see if there's any little weak spots that you don't know about. Right, so straight into it, start the lower plate. Lower plate is fair game for every tank this tank is going to meet bar the very bottom because it's very nicely angled. That is fair game for everything. It's 160mm thick but it's not very well angled. See pre normalization at 34 degrees, so it's quite square, really. The upper plate is 140 millimeters thick, but it's very, very nicely angled and shaped all of the way around. So the sides are going to be a bounce ricochet for pretty much everything. The ver this part here, a tier 9s, 10s are going to be able to get through there. So side scraping is probably going to be the best option for you with this tank. There is a big weak spot on the front, though, the driver's viewport. It's 200 millimeters thick but it's not very well angled and the effective thickness probably is yeah, tier 8s might have a job getting through it but everything else um, that's going to be fair game for we're on to the turret this upgraded turret is an absolute monster and it completely transforms this tank and makes it so powerful even in a tier 10 game just look at the figures that are coming out of this it is ridiculous there is a couple of areas where it is high 200s but even still that's still high 200s so tier 10s on maybe premium rounds may sneak through here but that is a very small area to hit the gun mantlet is completely out of the question for firing at it is ridiculous and the sides of the turret also you're just going to ricochet off that the turret on this thing is amazing and it's why I love this tank so much that is perfect right so it does have a commander's cupola however it's 200 millimeters thick the same as the driver's viewport and it is nicely angled on the top so it's nicely shaped so you'd have to hit it dead square right there to maybe guarantee a penetration the further you come away because it's a round commander's hatch the numbers start to creep up and it's looking like more and more of a bounce or a ricochet Right, so that's the front covered. It's looking pretty good so far, bar a couple of little weak areas, but they're not that weak in reality. So let's have a look at this tank from the side. This whole part of the turret is fair game. You're going to be able to penetrate there quite easily. This part of the turret is a bit more better angled, so that's not going to be as easy as pen, but it's still high to tank destroyers. That is still going to be penetrable. The side armor is 140mm thick here, there's no spaced armor here, so this is going to be fair game for every tank this tank meets. If you're firing here at this thing, don't aim at the tracks, the tracks count as 20mm of spaced armor, so the heat rounds are going to be soaked up by the tracks here, and it won't penetrate. However, AP and APCR rounds are probably going to penetrate here quite easily. Onto the back of the tank. It's only 100 mil thick and it's not very well angled there, so that's a guaranteed pen for everything that this can meet. Same here, and the same here, bar the nicely rounded sides of the turret, so don't aim there. You can see some green areas from the back, but if I flick the tank like this, there's a very, very three large areas at 30 millimeters on the top of the turret, top of the engine deck in, and right back here. Artillery. If you're in an artillery piece, this is where you need to aim, and you're probably going to get a, a HE penetration if that's what you're doing in your artillery. Right, so as I said earlier, the best way to play this thing is to side scrape. Even when you angle like this, the front plate's still pretty, pretty thin, and that driver's viewpoint is still penetrable there. 
So what you want to be doing is hiding that around the building or a rock or something and angling your turret out. So if we put the turret about there, if you draw a line down from the turret, if you imagine the building was just there, all of that is now hidden and all you're showing is your really strong part of your turret and your side armour. So if we start from the mo the uh, thinnest part here, most tier 9s fire in standard rounds are not going to be able to penetrate you if you're side scraping this tank. And the further we go back, the larger the numbers get and even tier 10s are not going to be able to penetrate you from that angle. So this tank is going to be most effective when you're side scraping or hull down. Let me show you. Put the turret back. If you can get hull down over something that is hiding your driver's viewport and hiding your lower plate, or even just the lower plate, hopefully people won't be able to hit that small target. All of this is going to be a bounce. And that's how you want to play this. Either hull down or side scraping. And there we go. Right guys, hope I you enjoyed seeing this tank using worldoftanks.gg. Please let me know if you did and I shall use it in future videos. Right guys, so we've had a look at the tank. Now I'll just show you what equipment I fitted to it and I'll give you my reasons why. Right, so large calibre tank rammer. I think that's probably a good idea with most heavy tanks because their rate of fire is very, very low. Um, a 10% of the loading time really can help you just increase that, your DPM that much. If you're in a tricky situation, you may be able to fight your way out of it. Right, the next piece of equipment, and probably I wouldn't probably recommend it to everybody, I play on my own quite a lot, which is why I take coated optics over vents sometimes. If you play in platoons regularly, I would change out the coated optics and put vents on just to bring up all your other major crew skills that extra little bit. Like I said, I don't platoon very often so I'll, normally I go for coated optics over vents because I need the view range to be able to operate on my own. So that's my reasoning there. Last bit of kit and the one you most definitely need is vert stabs. I did, like I showed you the aim time on this thing is horrendous. So 20% off is really really worth doing and that is really going to help you out. But uh, being able to get your shots in before the sneaky little buggers run off and hide. Right, so that was a quick look at that. I'll show you what supplies I've got. This gun performs very well with standard rounds. So I have quite a lot of standard rounds. I carry eight premiums. You don't use them very often, but they're there just to deal with things like mouses and Jagdpanzers and stuff like that. Got six HE. You will come across Waffentrogers quite a lot in this thing. So I do carry enough HE to be able to take a Waffentrager down in about four shots, depending on the rolls. Consumers again, if you've seen any of my other videos, I just run standard consumables. I don't use any premiums for public lobbies and I'm saving them all up for if Clan Wars ever appears. Last one, crew skills. This crew was a new crew when this line came out, so I don't have a huge amount of crew skills yet. I went for brothers in arms to bring up all the crew skills most of the aim time. Repairs, because you're going to be at the front taking hits, you will get tracked in this thing a lot and that is all that's going to happen to you most of the time and it is quite annoying to be perma tracked so I've gone for repairs. Six cents again, like I said with the coated optics I play on my own quite a lot um, so to be able to operate on your own successfully this is probably a good idea having six cents. I'm training up off-road driving at the minute, I don't do that very often, but I found with this thing, because it's so heavy and it doesn't have a huge amount of engine power, getting across medium and soft terrain can be a bit of a bugger when you're trying to traverse and stuff like that. So I'm going for off-road driving to change the ground resistances. And that is that. Right, so that's that all done. Let's go and have a look at some gameplay and I'll try and show you why I love this tank so much. Right, so here we go. Um, just loaded into Corellia in the ST1 or STI, however you like to say it. I'm in a heavy tank, top tier, so we're going to push around the hill and see if we can forge our way around and clear out any enemies that might be trying to hold their side of the hill. Right, 
So as you can see, big old tank, lots of armour. But we are downhill, you will get up to the top speed limit. But I don't think it maintains it very well on open ground. One thing I didn't mention in the garage was the gun depression. This tank is quite tall and the turret is also quite tall and that gives you 8 degrees of gun depression. 8 degrees is a lot on a Russian tank and you can really put that to use with this turret. Uh, any of you that like playing your mediums, a strong turret and gun depression can be used very very well on ridge lines. Not many ridge lines on this side of the map though, so I'm going to take up my normal position. Try and fend off any enemies that try and push through. Don't know what happened to that shot there. It was aimed quite nicely. Right, so here comes the hero, heavy tank. Managed to hit him and track him. And picked up some tracking damage there. Again, hit his ammo rack. A VKA is really no match whatsoever for the ST1, even when not upgraded. And there we go, pick up the first kill. 0.37 accuracy isn't that bad at all for a Russian tank. So I was just holding there to cover the corner doesn't appear that the enemy team want to come and play with us here. Can see quite a few outs to the other flank though, so we need to push this flank quite hard now. What I don't want to happen is to have an easy fight this side, push round and then be too far away from our own cap to go back in the event that the enemy's team push through the field. So I have a T-30 with me, he's in front. Good player as well. Between the two of us we're going to sort out these guys really quickly. So AT there, easy kill. But then Russian accuracy let me down that time. And the T-30, that's a big old shell into that anti AT with it 88 this stands for anti tank number eight I think enemy's T34 he's angling but American tanks their holes are normally pretty useless so it's always the first place you should aim if they're not hold down and bingo pick up kill number two The exception to that though is the M103 and the T110 tanks. Their holes are pretty troll. Easy kill there on the Yank Panther for kill number three. We fixed the track. Right, so my thinking here was to push across and try and relieve some of the pressure on the guys the other side. But quite a few targets get spotted. And I'm starting to take some incoming. So I swing left a bit and I'm going to go up onto their base and try and clear out who's there. There we go, there's that Russian accuracy again. This tank's armour and its gun really lends itself to getting really close and fighting face to face. It's not much of a sniper. And if you are sniping in this tank, you're probably playing it a little bit wrong anyway. Right, so here we go. Snapshot there, missed by Mars. I misjudged that guy, I thought he was going to carry on driving forward. Just as I fired, he reversed up. So I've prioritised the artillery there. My reasoning for that is one of the few tanks in the game that could give me trouble at the artillery. And there's another one. 
probably could have used a HE shell there, but I did not know they were going to be there for the first shot. So I didn't have HE loaded. And I've let both of them get away on low health. Right, so here we go. Yag Tiger bounces his first shot. It looks like he's fully upgraded as well. Our turret is more than a match for a Yag Tiger. And more than a match for that object. Again, prioritising the RT. It did get a shot off, but it missed, luckily. There we go, is that cheeky T29? He's trying to flank our T30. So I drop what I'm doing there, and I go to chase it. Probably could have took that shot there, because if I missed, I would have reloaded in time by the time I caught him anyway. But I'm going to push around and guarantee the kill here. You might think chasing a low health tier 7 heavy tank is a bad idea. But there is a object 430 and a Yag Tiger still holding their base and T32. So keeping that T30 alive is quite a high priority. So a bit of an unfair fight now. An SP1 versus a T32. This guy would have to use premium rounds to get through my front plate. And even the driver's viewport, he would still need premium rounds. Yeah, a little bit unfair there. Target locked. Target released. As the enemy's WZ120, he was trying his hardest to get some damage done. And he was causing a bit of a problem for some of our guys, but um, we're just cleaning them up too quickly now, and he goes down. Of course, there's just one left now. I'm just looking for a long range shot, there's no point in me driving all the way over there, this guy's going to be dead. And there we go, top gun in the ST1. Right, so to sum this tank up then, it is a big lumbering heavy tank beast, but then that's what heavy tanks are for. As you see, I've blocked 2,170, not a huge figure, but remember we only took one penetrating shot, so the amount of damage I blocked on top was more than enough to kill me. So if this game had gone on a bit longer, if the enemy's team had been a bit stronger, I could have fought on and on with the hit points remaining, and probably could have pulled out a really big game there. But anyway, decent amount of base experience, 6 kills, and 4,500 damage odd done. Just the same as the T30, we cleaned up that flank pretty good there, and that's what you can do in the ST1. It's just one of those tanks where you can just get to the front, and hustle, and smash people to bits. Even tier 10 tanks, and that's why I love it so much. Right, cheers guys, I hope you enjoyed this review, please give it a like if you did, and please sub if you're not. Cheers guys, see you later.